So we are heating this six and a half gallons here up to 90 degrees. When it gets to 90 degrees, we are going to add a culture. So the culture is just a small amount of whatever you want this whole cheese to end up being. So this is going to be a, uh, it's going to be a thermo, a mesophilic, a mesophilic culture that we're going to add to this. We are actually going to use a mesophilic culture um, that we actually pulled off of our last batch of cheese. When I made that cheese, there was a lot of whey left over. We can use that whey, it's called backsplash whey, to start another batch of cheese, which is what we're gonna do here. For this six and a half gallons, I'm going to use one cup of backsplash whey from a, another mesophilic culture cheese. So I'll explain more about that later. If you have questions, please put them in the description or the comments below. So I will add that when this is at 90 degrees. Okay, we are at 90 degrees. We are going to put our backsplash whey in. This is what this backsplash whey looks like. Um, we're going to do one cup. We're going to pour it on the surface of our milk. And then we're going to use our wooden spatula to stir it in. We're going to stir it in an up-down fashion, not um, in a circle. When you're stirring any kind of um, milk or making cheese, you're going to go up and down. That is the main uh, way you stir. It's just trying to get from the top to the bottom, especially with raw milk, because um, you will have your cream come to the top. We want to do this with it. And then we're going to set a timer for one hour. We're gonna let that culture that we have added ripen our cheese. All right, our hour is up. Our cheese has culture for one hour. This is a quarter cup of water. Uh, recipes will call for a quarter cup of water with your rennet. Even if you do three times that recipe, only put a quarter cup of water in that to mix with your rennet. For raw milk, for six and a half gallons of raw milk, I'm gonna use three-fourths a teaspoon of animal rennet in that. That is not going to be something that the recipes will tell you. If it's raw milk, it's gonna to be totally different than what they say. You're gonna use less because there are so many properties to the raw milk that has not been killed uh, because it has not been pasteurized. So I'm using animal rennet. You can Google what that is. It's not a fun thing to think about, but put that in the half, the quarter cup of water. This has been sitting now with that culture. So this whole pot of milk has cultured with that mesophilic backsplash whey. We're going to pour the rennet and water on top, and then I am going to stir it in. We're mixing just like we did before, from the top to the bottom, all the way around the pot. That surface has already, um, the cream had already come to the surface. Uh, so we definitely take the time. You're not supposed to splash your milk when you do this either. So I'm gonna try my best, make sure it gets mixed in well, and then I'm gonna set another timer for an hour. I have not had the heat on. I hope I said that to begin with. I turned that heat off once I got up to 90 degrees. This heat has not changed. We should be right at 90 still. I have not turned that burner on. We're, it's holding its temperature just fine. So all this is happening once we have hit that 90 degrees. We're gonna keep it right there. So, almost done mixing this in. Not splashing. I'm gonna set a timer for one hour. Then we're gonna cut the curds. This is not gonna be the easiest thing to show you, but I will try my best. We're going to go down with our bread knife. <laughs> I really need a longer knife. So instead of just pulling it straight across, I go up and down because I want to get it to the bottom, but I don't want to break the top surface of my, um, where the curd is. I don't want it, that to be all mushed. So I'm going to go through this way, through the whole pot, and then I'm going to take my knife and go horizontal all the way through, half inch apart from each other. And then I'm going to take my knife at an angle and on all four corners, I'm gonna go at an angle in each line that I've already made. That should give us a pretty good grid. You're never gonna get it perfect as a home cheese maker, but that's a pretty good one. Okay, I have my grid cut into our, 
our curd. We're going to let it set now for five minutes and then we are going to start the stirring process. Letting it set for five minutes will actually help these curds to toughen up a little bit. They won't break apart quite as easily and just become mush. Okay, we have let these curds now sit and rest for five minutes. We are going to begin stirring them. This is the longest hands-on time that you have in this whole process. You're going to stir this non-stop for 30 minutes. So actually, 30 minutes to 45 minutes. We are going to heat these curds now. We've had this off since we hit 90 degrees way back, you know, hours ago. Uh, the burner has been off. We are going to turn that burner on to um, right be before medium heat. We're going to still kind of keep it kind of um, a soft heat up we don't want to burn our the bottom of this at first we're going to start stirring oh important you want to raise the temperature very slowly very slowly and controlled you do not want this to heat up really fast because as your curds cook they will change form and you don't want that we want very slow heat up process stirring the whole time so nothing gets stuck on the bottom no, the curds on the bottom are not getting overdone and the curds on top are underdone. So we are going to keep them moving. And as we stir, I'll show you here. As we stir, we're going to, oh, it's a little bright. We're going to find any pieces that we don't have quite in cut. And we're just gonna take our, our spatula and break them up. We want a half inch cubes. You won't get it perfect. You really won't. But we're going to gently start stirring with at first with our uh, spatula but then I'm going to switch to my hand once I know that these curds are not quite as as tender and easily broken up because that is the best way to feel the texture and I will bring you back so I'm going to be sitting here for a long time I'm going to actually be reading um, a school book to my kids while I'm doing this so I will get back to you I'll show you as I start to use my hand to stir. And I did put my thermometer back in here. Oh, we are trying to raise the temperature to 100 degrees. We were at 90. We stayed at 90. We're getting up to 100 degrees at this point very slowly for 30 minutes at least. I kind of like to go as long as the 45 minutes. But um, this, is, this is the way I do it. And I do it different every time. <laughs> We have almost reached the temperature. We are about 99 degrees. We still have three minutes on the timer. And I can definitely tell that they are getting very close. I'm stirring with my hand because just like with bread making, if you do not actually get to feel it with your hand, you do not know. So I don't mind. I'm stirring it with my hand now. I started doing that after about 10 minutes of stirring. We are very close to our temperature. I still have a few pieces, curds that are a little bit bigger. I'm just breaking them up when I see them. They have definitely shrank a lot since we first began to stir and their texture is getting a lot more uh, of a squeaky. I could definitely squeeze these together now. I'll show you what that looks like. No, nope, they still need a little more time to stir. Whenever it Whenever they are all the way done and they're ready to be pressed, there'll be a difference in their texture when you squeeze them. They will stick together. They will knit together a little bit better. So after we are done doing this, we are going to let these curds knit together on the bottom for, I think, uh, 30 minutes will be good. 30 minutes. And then we're going to scoop the whey off. We can use this whey from this cheese to start another cheese if we would like after this. We keep it in the fridge, scoop off, that would be black backsplash whey. Scoop it off, store it in your fridge, right on there, meso culture, and you can make your next wheel of cheese using that. So I, my timer's just about to go off and I definitely, I feel a big difference in the texture of this, they are ready to be knit together. We are almost there. 
definitely need your hands in order to feel on the bottom and make sure that you have none that are burning down there. They're not going to really burn. They're just going to get really rubbery if they've been on the bottom too long. You do not want that. But this is definitely, definitely close. Okay. Okay. I have stirred it now for 30 minutes. I'm going to let the curds now settle to the bottom for five minutes and then we are going to drain the whey off. I am starting to get my cheesecloth ready. <clears throat> I have boiling water in my kettle and I have it have my cheesecloth cheesecloth lining my my strainer, my colander. And I'm pouring that boiling water around in my cheesecloth. That is just to make sure there's no bacteria that could be present, bacteria <clears throat> or culture from maybe something I've done in the past. I also use this for yogurt um, that can interfere with my cheese culture. So doing that, then I'm going to put it over top of a bucket and strain, dump my cheese and curds into that and catch it all in my cheesecloth. This is what it looks like when I have poured all my curds down into my cloth lined uh, colander. I'm actually going to tie up the corners and I am going to hang this from a hook that I have right there on my cabinet. I'm going to hang that there, let it drain for one hour. I've turned my fan off in here because you want it to stay uh, relatively warm. Okay, I have the curds in the cheesecloth. They are going to drain it now. I'm catching the way at the bottom for one hour. Okay, our bag of curds has been draining for one hour. We are going to open it up, dump out our curds into a big bowl, and we're going to take our fingers, break the big mass apart into walnut size curds pieces and we are going to mix in our salt for this six cups of or six cups six and a half gallons I'm gonna do three <sighs> I've been listening to true crime all day so I'm a little on edge Daisy is pecking at my window <laughs> I'm going to put three tablespoons of pink Himalayan sea salt in this uh, cheese. Okay, we're breaking it up into walnut sized pieces now. We're going to add three tablespoons of, of pink Himalayan sea salt. Just use good quality salt. Don't go for table salt, please. Just throw that away if you have it. Just throw it away and get Himalayan sea salt, get uh, Redmond sea salt, get Celtic sea salt. Just something of high quality, especially when you're going through the effort of making homemade food. And something that is going to be delicious. It's only, it's only benefited from good quality salt. And it's so much healthier with good quality salt. So, breaking it up, putting three tablespoons of the sea salt. This is probably my favorite part. People like to eat these. If it is a cheddar cheese, this is actually a, um, it's sold as squeaky cheese. Cheese curds from a cheddar cheese. Would you like a piece of cheese? Would you like a curd? Yeah. They are better once they've been salted, so I always wait till I salt them. That's definitely my favorite time, but I prefer sharp cheese. This is delicious anyway, and it really, it pays to have a bunch of this cheese in your cheese fridge or your milk fridge or just in your fridge. Like I just have one fridge. It keeps me on top of my cheese, my milk whenever I don't have a backup fridge that I'm just keeping, you know, six to 12 gallons of milk in. Then I, it doesn't sneak up and I'm like, oh my gosh, I have too much milk. I gotta come up with something to do with it and then it get wasted. I'm, I'm not wasted any milk between, um, neighbors that we share with 
people that we do milk shares with and bartering with and making butter, cheese, yogurt. Um, I use a lot when we do a uh, puddings or we also make custard. Oh, that was delicious. Our neighbor told us about doing custard with homemade, uh, with home milked milk, with raw milk and with our own eggs from our chickens. Wonderful. This is the mommy. Okay, these curds look about right. I'm putting three tablespoons of that pink Himalayan sea salt. We get ours at Costco. A lot of people say, um, that was it full, so I'm gonna do a little more. That Azure Standard has a good deal on Himalayan salt. But that works for us. I'm gonna mix it up. Now I have cheese all over my hands. Daisy's gonna help. Stir it. Because she's a little cheese maker and milk made like her mommy. Is that right? Yeah. You like making cheese? Or do you like eating cheese? I think eating somebody's cheese. here. It never fails if I'm being very uh, studious in the kitchen. I just like that word. And I have um, headphones in. I'm usually listening to Stephanie Harlow. If you like True Crime, go ahead and listen to her. She always does very interesting cases. Uh, it never fails. Somebody's going to come to the door and scare me. Because <laughs> I'm not going to be ready for them. Okay. Mm. Somebody's eating some of the cheese curds. They are mixed in. The salt is mixed in. I'm going to go ahead and get my press ready. I'm going to boil some more water. And I'm going to run that boiling water down through my cheese mold in my <clears throat> cheese press so that and, and I'm gonna go ahead and sanitize with hot boiling water another cheesecloth this cheesecloth that we just hung it in you need to rinse this out with hot water oh, before you throw it in your laundry one. or this will smell like cheese again so rinse it in the sink before you put it this one's a big one yeah it is do you think I need to tear it up a little bit you want to do that for me I so the recipe for farmhouse in one of my books says to get the curds down to walnut size. My question is, walnut, walnut pieces that you buy in a store or walnuts like you see outside? Like the green walnuts. I have no idea what they're talking about. So I just, you know, this is about what I do here. Good size. Just you want the uh, you want the ch the cheese to evenly distributed uh, sea salt in it. So I'm gonna wash my hands now. Me too. <laughs> and start a cheese press. Okay, this is my cheese press. This is nothing fancy. I actually got this press. Uh, from eBay, I believe. It was not very much. It was very good price for cheese presses for sure. But I did get the mold that comes with a follower. <clears throat> this is for, uh, I think they said five to seven gallons of cheese, of milk that you end up with in this. This I actually got from New England Cheese Making Company and the stainless steel drip pan that I have at the bottom too. Got that from that company. I'm eating this. So I was being as frugal as possible with this cheese press. So we have our sanitized cheese mold. Our cheese mold. Cheese cloth. Stop eating them. We're going to put our cheese curds into our mold. this cheese for one hour on a firm pressure 
which is pretty much as tight as you can get on a on something like this on a press like this and then we will come back and we will flip it after one hour we'll flip it and we will yeah lots of big ones too we didn't tear it in big pieces but it will taste wonderful anyway then we'll flip it and we'll press it firm overnight so i will come back and show you when we have or i'll show you cranking down the press also just a second it takes a little time you'll eat them yes we we will eat them i'm pressing down as i go the stainless steel drip pan does help because then i can set it next you know on the side of my sink and the way is going to drip into the sink and i don't have a big mess and i don't have to have it in like a pot in the corner of my kitchen only downside about doing cheese whenever you already have lots of things going on in your kitchen is you have to give it space because it does have a culture like we put in there you don't want that to interfere with other cultures in my kitchen i have sourdough i have kombucha i have milk kefir and i have lacto fermenting vegetables and my cheese culture and so i don't have a huge kitchen so taking the the precaution of having things i'm going to set this over here so she can have some more of the curds on and there's just a little bit left taking the precaution of having six feet apart from all your your cultures is not very practical in the kitchen so i've never actually had any contamination issues that would be my first thing if it, i ever had a cheese that that seemed to be growing something that was wrong or had a bad taste that would probably be my first thing i would rule out is did it get contaminated with a yeast from bread baking or another bacteria that i'm already hosting in my kitchen so this is a very thriving community of cultures which is good because that's great for your your gut flora but okay so i put my my uh, cheesecloth over I, f I folded it over the top this is our first pressing so it's going to be a little we're going to be able to when we flip it we'll be able to see if we did it unevenly if we had enough pressure so it's not like break make or break on this one so we are definitely going to twist it down these are springs this is a, a really decent mold a, a really decent press for the price I was looking into cheese making and the and the presses and they are upwards of two hundred dollars for a press. I wasn't willing to do that. So in my setup here, because we're trying to be frugal also, this is trying to save me money, not spend money, even though we are getting cheese that is well worth way more than what we spend on cheese when we go grocery shopping or if we would buy cheese. There's there's no reason for me to buy cheese right now. We are eating high quality, like Asiago's, Havarti's, I can't even think of it, Colby's, Cheddar's, uh, Parmesan's. These, these that I'm making are really good cheeses, but we're eating them in place of what we would have gotten at the grocery store cheaply. So I have to make sure that I'm still being frugal enough to justify this definitely am with this press I think all together in this I have less than a hundred dollars now this was I bought this last year this is 2022 For some reason the world um, all prices in the world has nearly doubled on everything this year so I can't guarantee you could get away with the same setup for that price but I'm thankful for this one so as I'm squeezing it down there is a lot of whey pouring out going into my sink. That is a good sign. I want there to be a lot of tension here, pushing lots of whey out. We're gonna let this have one hour to press, trying to get it even. It might not be, but we can fix that later if it's not, so. Okay, this has been in the press for an hour, probably a little more than, the, more than an hour. We're going to twist our nuts 
and get our cheese out of our press. We're going to flip it and then we are going to press it again, this time on firm pressure, again, all night long. So I'll get it out sometime tomorrow. So this is what is going to give us a nice round wheel shape. And the point of pressing is to get all that way out. We're getting, we're making a hard cheese. Wow, I was really crooked with my, with my follower and my line up here. And I will show you. Okay, I'm going to use my cheese cloth to get it out. All right, not bad, not bad. Okay, here we go, look how uneven. <laughs> I can fix that in my next, when I press again, I'll just make sure that I am doing it even. <laughs> press harder, I'll have this, um, the, uh, oh my gosh, the spring. The spring will be tighter on this side uh, so that I have this even help to uh, make this a square. But this, if you can see at the top, this is knit together pretty good. So we are going to flip it. Nope. <laughs> this was pressed. It was like this in the press. This is what how we're going to press it now. We're going to use the same cheesecloth. Some people say to change it. I'm um it's not lazy, but I don't want to be dumb <laughs> with my time and effort. So I'm not doing that because I don't want to wash out the cheese cheesecloth if I don't have to. Put it in. Try to do it with out wrinkles this time because this is your final press we're going to put our follower on and we are definitely going to get this side pressed harder than the other side so get it in there try to get it square tighten it back up we're going to go on for firm firm pressure all night we will look at it again tomorrow. At that point, we're gonna let it air dry, and then we will vacuum seal. I actually have one over here that I pressed. This has been a few days, and it has been sitting on the counter, uh, and it is ready to be vacuum sealed. Oh, it smells good. You can eat it right now. I'm going to actually vacuum seal this, write on it what I've made, what the date is, and how long you should age this, like I said, cheddar, you can eat whenever you want. I like to give this at least one month. Uh, I think that it is going to be delicious. This is the same thing as this. This was actually a little less uh, milk to make this cheese, so this will be a bigger wheel. But I put it on a plate to air dry. We will vacuum seal that together. And we will continue pressing this overnight. It is the next day. This has been pressed all night long. <laughs> I can't say that without singing it in my head. Get a drink. So I'm gonna take it out and I'm going to let it air dry. Sometimes that takes longer than other times. Um, I'll show you what I'm looking for. I have never aged cheese any other way than air drying it, vacuum sealing it and putting it in my fridge. That is the only thing that really works for me right now. There are other ways. Um, you can melt uh, cheese wax. Not sure what that's actually made of. I'm pretty particular about plastics and things like that in our kitchen. Um, not really into having anything like that that we eat from. And yet I have vacuum seal bags, but. Take the follower out. Pull the cheese out. All this needs to be washed very well. Uh, don't touch, honey. You were just outside. I'm going to unwrap it. It smells delicious. Mm. Really does smell delicious. And it's a beautiful wheel of cheese. Proud of that. Definitely wash this in the sink before you put it in your laundry. Wash it well. It's going to smell like cheese. There's no way that wash machine is going to get all that out. So wash it first in the sink. Uh, there's an indention. Must have been a curd on the stuck to the cheese. Yep. Piece of curd. Daisy. 
was stuck there. That is what made that. It's fine. It's beautiful. It smells delicious. I smell it. Okay, I'm gonna show you. This has a lot more weight than the one I made the other day. Please hop down so I can show this cheese that I made, honey. I'm going to set it on the counter on an upside down plate. I'm gonna let it air dry. I will put um, a towel over it just to keep any uh, flies or anything. We live on a farm, so we do have flies. This is the cheese I had from the other day. This is perfect time to vacuum seal it. Throw it in a vacuum seal bag and seal it up right on it. Put it in your fridge. It would be great to put this in a wine fridge. Uh, about 50 degrees is the perfect temperature. Your regular fridge is not gonna be that low. Uh, it's not gonna be that high, it's gonna be much lower. So things are gonna take longer to age in the fridge. I'm okay with that. None of this is a perfect science for me in my kitchen with our cow and our cheese. This is a smoked paprika Asiago. I'm proud of that one, haven't even cut that one open. I'm just showing you some that I've already, some varieties I can make. This is another farmhouse cheddar. This is what the same thing. Looks a little bit different. Red pepper gouda. This looks really pretty too. Very pretty. And then this is a traditional cheddar. Traditional cheddar takes longer. Um, it, it's, <laughs> it's worth the time. Uh, it should be aged no less than three months. So I don't want to do all of these and no farmhouse cheddars. Farmhouse cheddar is still absolutely delicious. A lot less work, but I will show you this if you're interested sometime on how to make this one. So I hope there are some people out there that enjoyed this. If you did, please subscribe. If you thought it was worth giving a thumbs up to, do that too. Let me know what you would like to know about dairy processing. I make all our dairy, I do not buy anything from the store, cream cheese, cottage cheese. Let me know what you would like to see, yogurt, what you're interested in, any of these cheeses that I've made you would like a tutorial on, let me know. I pray that you have a blessed day and I will see you back here again.